Shankar Sharma is joining us, founder of uh, G Quant Investec. Uh, Shankar, good morning. Uh, finally, uh, you know, uh, at new highs in the Nifty. You know, you you've been telling us about this uh, <coughs> lake of return theory. Sorry if I if I'm getting that uh, correct, uh, or if I mispronounced it. Yeah. Is the lake closer to being full? Is it half full? Is it overflowing? Where are we? No, Lake Lake is, I think, about half full. Good morning, uh, Prashant, and good morning to the rest of the guys. I can't see you, but, uh, you know, it's good to be uh, chatting with you guys again. So, yes, yeah, so the Lake morning. of Returns theory is the correct is the correct name. And thank you for not calling me a market veteran because I do not look like a veteran, <laughs> as, as, you are, as you are clearly aware by now at least. So... Uh, Right. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, it is it is it is obviously filling up. It was very, very low uh, at the point of the March 2020 crash when the Sensex, I think, fell to thirty seven thousand. And uh, at that point, the market had returned. Even actually prior to that, the Sensex had had a very, very poor run for about 10 years, beginning 2010. Uh, it had compounded at barely, I think, three or four uh, percent, which was well below even fixed deposit returns. So the lake was really empty. Lake was near the lows, and from the point the COVID happened, the lake started to fill very rapidly. Uh, so we we went down to 37. Now we have, you know, almost doubled. Not not doubled, but nearly doubled from those levels. But if you still see from a point to point from 2010 up until 2023, it is. A decent return, but not anywhere close to overflow levels. Not anywhere close to overflow levels. And I want to emphasize this because overflow will mean that markets for two, three years give you absolutely tear away returns like, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent compounding. We have not done anything close to that, uh, Prashant. I mean, so, I mean, if I, if I look back at the point at which I called the 2008 bear market that didn't come out of the subprime per se it came out of more the fact that in the preceding three four years from 2003 four up until 2007 december uh, our markets as well as global markets had delivered like in excess of 50 percent cagr now that that lake was overflowing that lake simply could not uh, hold on to that much uh, inflow of water or returns if you will so this lake is definitely nowhere close to being full and that is the good news all right. Hi, Shankar. Good morning. Nigel on this side. Uh, Shankar, let's talk about the smaller lake then, the small and the mid caps. Well, uh, the party has been there, right? After many years of underperformance, actually, uh, we have seen a good outperformance in the last three months or so. How do you position yourself out there? As you have been stating various times in the past, the big party will be there in the small and the mid cap space. Uh, tell us more about that from here on. So, yeah, so, so small lake, the kiddies pool. Uh, is is uh, was 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 actually very empty till about I think six months back when while the markets the broader market I mean let's say the not the broader but the larger caps is represented by the Sensex and the Nifty were were doing reasonably well they were hovering around between fifty eight to sixty two thousand Sensex levels the the small cap index the BSE small cap uh, which is a fairly good index you know was was at least I think fifteen eighteen percent away from its size so. So that lake was extremely low, extremely low in, in terms of returns. Again, go back in time, 2018 was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, January was the peak of, of the small cap market. And then it basically, you know, collapsed thereafter and remained in the doldrums. It has had its moment post-COVID, uh, but still relative to large caps on an index basis, it hadn't done much. So the lake was again very empty. Uh, very ripe for filling up and filling up rapidly because this lake, the kiddies pool, can fill up very quickly. And we are seeing that fill up very, very quickly. But this pool, because it is a kiddies pool, can expand a bit. Large caps, because of their sizes in terms of their overall, let's say, a, you know, a big bank or a big uh, FMCG company, have limited room to expand. They will, they will grow for sure, but obviously at a far lower rate, while the kiddies pool end of the market can expand a lot more, and which is why I'm extremely excited about, you know, the kiddies pool. Mm. Uh, Shankar, uh, sorry, I couldn't resist. Rima has a question, but Rima, just talking to you. Kiddies pool, you need those, uh, those, those vests and those, uh, what do you call, Nigel? 
kidney pool and see the call it the kidney pool no and the uh, what do you call the life not life jackets but those uh, rings right i mean those tubes plastic tubes too so that you're safe floats <laughs> thank you always 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 100% so in the adult pool you have the blondes in the bikini sorry to use that and, and i don't want to sound you know in any way offensive to to the ladies but i mean you know that's that, or or what are the hunks in their briefs uh you know while the kiddie pool requires you to have mandatorily you know those those floats around your arms and chest and whatever so yes it's a dangerous pool you can not drown but at least get uh, at least a bit of water in your lungs so yeah it's always uh, you know you need to be actually probably a bit more careful in the kiddie pool that's that's a good point uh, uh prashant ah uh, shankar do stay on while on the index maybe some euphoria and smaller segments of the market mid cap small caps etc on the frontline indices there is very little euphoria the euphoria if anything is around prospects for india and india's time in the sun and things like that which isn't exactly all that bad as long as it is it is not spilling over in a very large uh, kind of uh, you know mad cap rally in stocks which we've not seen so far shankar yes so uh... You, the 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 factors you point out are uh, absolutely spot on prashant and the fact is that india finds itself in a near you know touchwood near perfect position on a global macro basis uh, and you know china's woes have you know really come at the right time for india when america was looking for alternates or let's say the world was looking for alternates to 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 china and if you go back in time 2002 or 3 was when goldman printed the brick report which i thought was a bunch of nonsense at that point and i still believe so because it was an excel spreadsheet going out till 2070 or 50 or something now that i believe they've extended it to 2075 uh you know but the fact is that out of those four initial uh, nations uh china is has done very well in that interim period for sure no doubt about it but then it is already reached a middle income status it, the growth growth numbers cannot remain what they were stimulus cannot endlessly keep propelling it uh about brazil and russia the less said the better so that really leaves out of four reasonably good size countries markets populations just india so india is really offering itself up as a near perfect investment destination and i for the life of me cannot understand why fi has sold off so much as they did uh in the last couple of years i mean it is beyond any rational thinking but be that as it may it actually made a good case for domestic investors to step in so we have already created a fantastic pool of domestic investors and now with fpi is also turning positive i mean i don't see any any real risk the risk you mention or the risk you mention prashant are more that we need to have some risk you cannot have a you know a table with 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 only goods and none of the bads so it's more a formality you did and i the fact is i don't really see much of a risk out there for india All right, Shankar. Final question before we let you go. What are you buying lately? You know, BLS is the last reported one. Dronacharya is something that you've spoken about in the past as well. Uh, everyone's got their uh, life jackets on, the floats on from the kiddies pool as well. But uh, <laughs> a, a couple of stocks that we could uh, discuss. I'm putting on a snorkel right now because I have to really <laughs> do a bit of a dive here. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you will hear about it soon. I guess in the next two weeks' time. Okay. Uh just uh, can you tell us some themes because you've been very good at catching the up cycles, the down cycles, the turns in the market. I remember you spoke about IT, you got in at the right time, metals as well, the commodity space. Uh you had caught the up cycle. Right now, can you tell us the themes over the next 6 months which themes will do well? I have said this I think on your shows as well, uh Rima, but uh, I mean I'll repeat it. I believe and one of the reasons why I like small caps so much and particularly domestic focused small caps is that the addressable market for each of these companies is now equal to the GDP of large countries. I mean when I entered market 35 years back India's GDP was probably about 200 billion dollars or thereabouts. Today we add 200 billion dollars to GDP every year. That's the size and scale of what this market is about. I mean just I think two states Gujarat and Maharashtra must be well over a trillion dollars in GDP each part of India I mean if you divide it into four or five zones must be at least 500 to a trillion dollars I mean that's a huge size by any standards and which is why you are seeing small companies deliver good numbers because even 
those uh, yeah, and, and and those small companies obviously are not pan india they're focusing on their neck of woods but even that those neck of woods are offering them a very large size revenue and profit potential for example i met a company uh, a, a few weeks back it's in the jewelry space like a titan for the lower end of the market servicing only one part of india not a particularly rich part of india i must say it mm-hmm. it this year has made a profit of 120 crores a profit of 120 crores while servicing all of i think three states i mean that's astounding astonishing numbers by any standards uh, you know a company that i invested in called annapurna swadesh which was a small ipo a year back i think it's up like seven times from the ipo price this year we expect them to i mean this quarter we expect them to do numbers right. which will be equal to the entire last year's numbers so the themes are small caps focusing on individual areas of of india not just pan india plays uh shankar uh, it's always a pleasure thank you very much for joining us uh, as we uh, make new highs on thank the index guys. and uh, thank you very much uh, for being here on cnbc tv 18 as well